Welcome to our midweek refuel and pre-fuel for this uh, inauguration day. I'm glad that we're able to be together here in my house this evening. It's been an incredible week at St. Paul's. Uh, many of you likely are aware that we had a COVID exposure in our Christian Childhood Center and uh, spent basically the past two days dealing with that. And so I've moved from uh, one aspect of my call where I get to preach and teach and do all of those wonderful things over to the times where I get to be a church administrator and someone who helps the parish deal with the things that come its way. We're going to continue to pray for everybody, uh, both in our congregation and outside of our congregation that are suffering with COVID. Um, as we've seen case numbers rise, we've seen this uh, scourge get closer and closer to us and affect people that we love. It's one of those things that uh, we have to continue to call on the Lord uh, to bless us in and through. Uh, I continue to pray that more vaccinations might become available and that they are distributed well. I continue to pray that the folks who are researching this disease make strides against it. I continue to pray that we all continue to keep our, uh, our vigil and make sure that we're doing the things that are going to keep us healthy and safe. Um, wash those hands, <laughs> use your hand sanitizer, keep those masks at the hand, you keep the physical distancing, make sure that you're doing everything you can uh, in wisdom in order to be able to make your way through this pandemic, which is, oddly enough, the thing that's brought us together. Um, one of the things that you've heard me say many times is that as we are forced apart from one another, we have to intentionally connect with one another. It's only that way that we can continue in this love that God initiated in us. It's the only way that we can continue well in our discipleship because God did not call us into isolation. He called us into fellowship with one another. And that's what our worship this coming weekend is going to focus on. It's being called. And as you can see from the title of this live stream today, um, it's from and to. Important prepositions. Uh, I'm going to give Ethel Lesh uh, a grammatical shout out. Uh, she's the one that continues to remind me of the difference between bring and take. I still have a hard time remembering those. I guess it's my uh, Metro New York upbringing. We don't do those words uh, properly. But from and to uh, are wonderful words. Uh, they show up on Christmas packages under the tree. From Santa to you. It's a great thing to know that there is somebody behind that gift and somebody in front of that gift. And what brings that together is love. There's, there's a lot that that gift and those gifts have in common with our call as disciples of Jesus. There's a from and to. The from is from our Lord Jesus. Of course, his call is the one that emanates from his desire that everybody would come to a knowledge of the truth, including you, including people around you, including the whole world, everybody that ever lived and ever will live. Jesus wants them to know of his love. So St. Paul's mission statement of being gathered by God to share the love of Jesus involves our call as disciples. Disciples are called from an old way of life that didn't have Jesus. They're called from old patterns of thinking and speech. They're called from unholy living and untoward Facebook posts and anger with fellow congregants and frustrations with the other side. Do you know Jesus calls us from our hardened political positions? Jesus calls us from our most intransigently held beliefs that if they're not in line with what he would say or how he would act, he calls us from them. And he says, follow me to a holy way. Follow me to a peaceful relationship with family members and friends and congregants. Follow me to a connected with connectedness with one another that 
supersedes and transcends all of the other divisions that the world puts in your path. Follow me into holiness and a bright and beautiful future that has nothing to do with who occupies the White House. It has everything to do with who occupies your heart. Discipleship matters. It's central to the call and the work and the ministry of Jesus. Who we are as followers of Jesus is not people who set aside an hour on a Wednesday night or Sunday morning or whenever it is that we're worshiping or tuning in, setting aside some time for our God factor. No. Jesus calls us from a way of life and to a different way of life. A way of life that looks like him, that sounds like him, that acts like him that follows in his footsteps through a cross of suffering and difficulty in this world to a reward of honor and joy and beauty and peace that isn't only in the future. It starts now by the way that we act toward him and with one another. Our world is horribly divided. The us and them we talked about a few weeks ago touches us over and over again. We define and distinguish ourselves. And that which agrees with us we call good, and that which is different or we disagree we call evil. And it's very easy to look at the world not as I and thou, like one philosopher said, I believe it was Martin Buber, but I and it. What if Jesus had done that? What if our Lord had looked at the world and the way that we are wholly different and entirely set apart from him and said, well, that's your problem. He came from heaven to earth, crossing a divide that none of us could cross. He came from heaven to earth, from perfection to whatever it is that we live in day by day. He came from perfect peace into conflict. He came from holiness into our sin. He came from eternal life into our death, and he embraced it all. Why? So that he could look at us, despite our differences, and say, You are my brother. You are my sister. And God is our Father. That love of the Father for us that we should be called the children of God is the thing that sent Jesus from where he was to where we are so that we could come from where and how we are to where and how he is. Discipleship and the church is who we are. It's our nature. It's what Jesus has given to us. Let's use it. Let's use the inspiration of what he has brought us to. To look at one another with the eyes that Jesus would have. To talk to one another with the words that Jesus would use. To come alongside one another in the way Jesus I want you to see and know and feel the blessing of what it means to follow Jesus every day. 
to know that as he looks on what you say, and what you post, and what you think, and what you do, and he'd say, yeah, I'd, I'd do it just like that. If you can't say that, then you probably ought not do it. So my fellow disciples, let's recognize that the world in which we live is broken. But Jesus puts us in it as the leaven and the lump. The world that we live in is dark, but he puts us in it as the light. The world around us is, is tasteless, <laughs> but he puts us in as the salt to give it and preserve, give, give it flavor and preserve it. Friends, as a pastor, my deepest desire is that we are together pulling in the same way toward the Lord Jesus from everywhere that we've come to the one place that we're going at. Connected to Jesus to glorify the Father with everything in our lives. Let's put aside all of our fronts and press on to the two Jesus, our Lord, gives us. Will you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, what are we without your mercy? Where would we be without your grace? Unless our Lord Jesus had come from his throne above, and gone to the throne of the cross in our place, what would become of us? We know that our world is broken. We see how our nation is broken. And when we look inside, we know that our lives are broken too. The good that we want to do we don't always do. And the evil that we would rather not do, we find ourselves doing that very thing. How wretched we are. Who delivers us from this body of death? You do. You deliver us from the power of Satan. You deliver us from our sinful lives. You deliver us from captivity to the ways of the world, and you bring us to your kingdom. You bring us to life. You bring us to your throne of grace, and you bring us to your good pleasure. Lord, help us remember the difference, the life and death difference between our old froms and the renewed twos that you give us every day. Help us, O oh Lord, in the ways that we live, in the words that we say, the things that we think, to reflect you. Be more present with us day by day, O oh Lord. And make us ever more aware of what you are doing in our lives to heal our old froms and to give us joy in our new twos. We remember before you, sisters and brothers from our congregation, from our Christian Childhood Center, from families just beyond us, and from people in the community who are suffering so terribly with the coronavirus and COVID-19. Spare us, O oh Lord. Show your mercy. Don't let us live with this disease for much longer. We've lost so much. 
Lord, restore what we've lost. Be present with us. Give health, O oh Lord, to everyone who needs it. Reach into this world to drive back all of the effects of this disease, not only in our bodies, but also in our psyches. Relieve our stress. Give us peace. Drive out our fears but do it by your might and grace and allow us so clearly to see that it is you who are blessing us so that we might rise up and praise your name. Lord, make this moment where we've been together truly a refueling point from which we might be able to go and follow you and be your hands and feet, your eyes and ears, your mouth and your heart in this world. Pull us together, O oh Lord, in every way that we need it, so that we might experience the unity not only with one another that you've given us, but the unity with you that we need so much. We pray, O oh Lord, for your mercy and grace to carry us through. All of this we pray. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, who came from you to us, so that we may come from here to you. Until we see you face to face, O Lord, continue to come to us. We pray all of these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, my fellow disciples, I hope to see you, whether it happens to be here on Facebook as we interact with one another or in person as we have the chance to be together at church. I hope to see you soon and to know that you are walking in the truth, to know that you are walking with your Lord, that you're walking from all the things that were but shouldn't have been to all the things that are and are great in the eyes of our Lord. I love you a whole lot, but as you know, he loves you so much more. Until next time.